Next, we're going to do iTerm2. So if I come here, um, I want to do that in a new window. I'm going to download iTerm2. This is just sort of another terminal replacement for the default terminal. I just tend to prefer it with uh, Max. I like it a little bit better. I've used things like Hyper. Um, let me show you what this is. I think this is it. Yes. So Hyper is like a JavaScript-based uh, terminal, and it's pretty cool. Or Electron-based, I guess. But it's pretty cool, except it, at least the last time I used it, it was a very, very big resource hog. And while it's nice and it's pretty and it has some cool features, the resource, uh, you know, the resources it used just didn't justify it for me. Um, it might be better now. I have no idea. It's been a kind of a long time. So if you want to check it out, you can. It's pretty cool. Uh, but I'm not going to be using this. I'm going to be using um, iTerm because I, it's going to do everything I want and it's going to be fast, snappy, all of that goodness. So I'm just going to go ahead and I think I already did this. I already oh, or installed it in here, so it should be. Yeah, it is. Okay. So here's the terminal window that's open. Now I'm basically just going to start um, setting up some preferences here. So I'm going to command comma, which is going to bring open the preferences window. And then I'm just going to start going through a lot of these. So general, um, there's a confirm quit. I don't like that. Uh, there's a, an adjust the window. Where is it? I don't like this one because I will change my font size from time to time in screencast and I don't really want it to change the window. This doesn't always, that setting doesn't always work correctly the way I want it to, but whatever. Um, then I'm going to go to, let me just check these two. Appearance, theme, I'm going to go dark. And that's just going to change that top bar to be dark instead of light. Uh, what else is there? Scroll bars. There's something in here to hide scroll bars. There we go. Which is not something I prefer. Um, if we go to keys... Uh, create the dedicated hotkey window. So this is up to you. Um, I'm going to show you what this does here in a second. I use command, option, uh, control, and T whenever I do this, which I know is a lot of keys, but and I have to move my hand over there to sort of make it work. But it's uh, something that you know I like and I've, I've become used to, so that's just what I tend to do. Okay, so it creates a new profile called hotkey hot window. So what this does is if I close that one, just command W, if I hit those keyboard shortcuts, you'll see it always brings up my terminal. And I like this because no matter where I am, I can always bring up my terminal. It doesn't matter what editor I'm working in, where I'm at, I always have that terminal available and then it goes away as soon as I stop using it. So, you know, some people like to use the terminal inside of VS Code or whatever. Um, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just not something I've become used to. I've, I've just gotten used to this over time. So it's what I tend to use. So I'm going to go through uh, this hotkey window and I'm going to change some settings and then I'm going to have to go through and make sure they're, I should have set them in default first, but it's fine. Um, in general, uh, I want to reuse previous sessions directory um, just because I feel like that's, you know, generally if I'm opening a new tab, I want it to be in the current directory I'm in and I can always go somewhere else if I want to. So profiles, um, what am I going to window? And then in here, um, adjust the look if you want. So for instance, I will decrease the transparency a little bit so it's a little bit darker, just so that I know it's always going to work the way I want it to. Um, anything else you want to change there, go for. Uh, terminal, there's something here. Silence the bell. Um, uncheck the send growl notifications. There's something here that sends... There we go, center alerts. I think this used to be growl, but now it says notification center alerts. I just don't care for notifications to go there. Um, I don't like the bell icon in tabs. And I have that duplicated for some reason. I must have really disliked it. And then the last thing is if I go to my text, I'm going to change this to the... Oh, I There's a lot of these nerd fonts that got installed here. So I think I preferred... Which one was it? LGS DZ uh, Nerd Font I don't know if I had mono or not. I'm assuming mono, but... And then I'm going to go to something like 20 for my size. I know that seems really high, but whenever I record a lot and I work on a larger screen, I just find that this is a little bit easier to work with. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um, 
got to hit enter here, I think. Well, I can just go to 18, that's fine. Why is it not letting me... I have to actually use the scroll bar, that's annoying. Or is that... Whatever, I'm going to mess with that in a bit. So, I can just use command this and change it a little bit. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to default. I'm going to do the same thing here. I need to change this to nerd font mono. This one changed for some reason, so why isn't this one? Now it's changing. That makes no sense. Okay, so I got that one to 20. I'm going to get this one to 20. So now it should automatically open up, be, you know, relatively large font size. Okay, so I have that set up. Um, what I'm going to need to do next is go through and duplicate all these changes in a default or make sure they're all present. So I'm just going to go through them real quick. Uh, I want to reuse previous session, and this is because the hotkey window will open up the first one, but if I open up new tabs, these don't use the, they use the default profile, not the hotkey one. So I just want to make sure if I open up new tabs, they have the same one. So general, um, we're going to reuse previous sessions directory. Um, what is it? Window, we want to, uh, well, I guess we can change some of this if we want. It's, you know, try to keep it the, the same. Uh, if you want the blur or whatever in the background. You don't need to change this stuff here, the full width, top of the screen, or any of that stuff. Because it'll automatically keep it there if it's up there as a tab up there. Um, and that way, if you do create a new window, you know, it's here. It can have some... It doesn't always create a window up top. You don't necessarily want that. So that's why I keep that style normal. It's a little bit weird to get used to. Okay, silence the bell. Don't send notifications. Don't do this. And I think that's everything. Okay, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the default font... And I'm going to duplicate this profile, and I'm going to rename this one. Uh, is there a way to rename it? Yes, here. This is going to be my cast profile. And the only real difference here I do for a cast profile is I change my font. Because whenever I'm recording screencasts, I find that it's much easier to just have a much, much bigger font. Well, if it's going to let me here. Well, I'm just going to close this. Let's open it back up and see if it'll let me this time. I don't know why it's being so weird. There we go. So you'll see here that I now have a cast profile. I can close this up. If I open this up, what I tend to do in a cast is I'll split things vertically. I will drag this to wherever the 1920 by 1080 marker is. And then over here, I'll right click. And then I will say, Edit Session. And then I will just double click on cast here and you'll see that this one gets bigger. So I can have extra terminals open and they're all the right size, but this specific one is bigger and it's limited to this width for my screencast. So that allows me to still do screencasts with this setup, but it's still slightly different. Okay, um, I think that's everything I need here for this. I know this doesn't look exactly like what you've probably gotten used to seeing in the videos. Um, what we're going to be doing in the next probably couple videos is looking at oh my zsh and antigen and some other things that are basically going to set up a lot of that look and feel that you're used to so that's what we're going to be doing next